From Babylon Timbuktu to Biban Kamat and Wasambara Jews. Professor Alan S. Godby says that the word Tabiban means smiths. He has located these Jews in central Ethiopia. The Tabiban Jews were really falashas, but they were forced to accept a nominal Christianity. They were like the Murano Jews of Spain, forced to accept a religion against their will. The word falasha in Amharic, the official language of Ethiopia, means immigrants. The falashas did not call themselves by this name. They used the name Beth Israel, the House of Israel. But the Abyssinians called them falashas. Because the other tribes in Ethiopia called the House of Israel falashas or immigrants, this would suggest that perhaps the falasha Jews came to Abyssinia at a later date. Therefore, they were ostracized because they did not accept Christianity. The Falashas held a monopoly on the skilled trades in Ethiopia. They were leather workers, potters, smiths, and masons. The Kamant Jews were separated into two classes, the Kaberti, honored. From these, the priests are chosen, and the Yatani, small or insignificant people. By the way, these two classes were called by names that are similar to the Hebrew. The Kamat Jews esteem Moses highly and many other Old Testament personalities. They observe Yom Kippur and the Feast for the Dead. Because they remain isolated from other Jews, Christians, and pagans, they learn very little from the external world. About 1,300 miles south of the territory of the Falashas lived the Wasambara people. There are a variety of colors from light brown to black. In their land are found asylum institutions, cities of res refuge, they are like the Levitical cities found in the Old Testament. Professor Godby says, Taken with sacrifices wherever Judaism is acknowledged, they must have been introduced by Yemenite or Himyaritic Jewish traders in the very ancient times. Concerning the Wasambara people, along the east coast of Africa opposite the island of Zanzibar, we know very little. But it is a known fact among scholars that Jewish merchants from Yemen traded along that coast. It is possible that Jewish colonies were established there at an early date. It is also a probability that Jewish tribes migrated from the north. I have shown previously that Jewish immigrants across the Red Sea into Ethiopia and that Jewish immigrants migrated from Egypt to Ethiopia. My conclusion is this. The nation of Ethiopia became a confluence or crossroad of a wave of Hebrew culture and settlements. Here in Ethiopia was the great center of the black Jews. They exchanged ideas. Some settled down to stay, others departed to the West and South. Joseph L. Williams, quoting Walter Chisel Plowden, the British consul in Abyssinia, agrees with my conclusion. After the British consul reviewed the national records and traditions, he concluded, two things are certain. That at a far later period, six sovereigns of pure Jewish race and faith reigned at Gondar. And that to this day, numerous Jews are found throughout Abyssinia. I think it is also highly probable that at whatever epoch it may be placed, the whole of Abyssinia was of Jewish persuasion previous to its conversion, as even those who have adopted the Christian creed still maintain numerous forms and observances. As we can conclude from the above and the other records, the Christians of Abyssinia were once Jews. Incidentally, Solomon Grazel in his book of History of the Jews has stated that there still exists 100,000 black Jews in Ethiopia who are not Christians. After King Abraha of Ethiopia accepted Christianity in the 4th century AD, the great change occurred that was disastrous to the existence of the Jews. They became victims of persecution that lasted for many centuries. Ever since the rise of Christianity in Ethiopia, Judaism has been decreasing. Yet in spite of social pressures and discrimination, 100,000 black Jews have been able to survive. This multitude of Jews surviving under hostile conditions proves their greater numerical strength earlier in their history.